If you didn't already know, SLMs or small language models are a really big deal now, and it's one of the biggest topics of discussion and development among basically every big player in large language models and AI. And today, Mistral gave us a really interesting release. There's good news and bad news in terms of what this means for the future of Mistral and edge-optimized small language models. So welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. Mistral is calling these two new models Ministral 3B and 8B, and they're some of the smallest models that Mistral has released. And the good news is the benchmarks for these models are incredibly impressive. These models are doing things that we previously didn't think were possible or that we only thought were possible in much more niche, limited ways. And Zypher's release yesterday of their new Zamba 2 2.7B model is making a lot more sense now, not just for using these models for edge compute, but also using them for agentic applications. And as I said earlier, this model has a lot of great attributes, but there have been some decisions made in this release that I think are kind of questionable and might actually be a step back from Mistral. So Mistral is describing this as, quote, the best edge model currently available. This has been released on the anniversary of the release of Mistral 7B, which I can tell you without any question was a monumental release for its time. And it's definitely not an understatement where they say that Mistral 7B is the model that revolutionized independent frontier AI innovation for millions of people and just anyone who likes open source local AI. Today, they say they're proud to introduce two new state-of-the-art models for on-device computing and at-edge use cases. They're not really mentioning agentic use cases yet, but I bet there is a clear application here. And we know that Mistral has been doing a lot of work internally on their own agentic frameworks, similar to Swarms, which we also made a video about on Monday. They call these Le Mistral, Ministral 3B, and Ministral 8B. And what's curious is these sizes are nearly identical to Zyphra's Zamba 2 release, which was a 2.7 billion parameter and 7 billion parameter model, although these are not using Mamba 2 as their core architecture. So they claim that these models set a new frontier in knowledge, common sense, reasoning, and function calling, and efficiency. I think efficiency for all of these models is really the biggest point of contention and the biggest point of competition in the sub 10 billion parameter model category. These can be used or tuned in a variety of ways from orchestrating agentic workflows, so they do mention it here, to creating specialist task workers, which I would assume a task worker is effectively just a form or a derivative of an agent. Both models support up to a 128,000 token context length, which is pretty impressive. And Ministral 8B has a special interleaved sliding window with attention pattern for faster memory and memory efficient inference. And again, like when we talked about Cypher yesterday, memory efficient inference is really the focus of these models. And the, the sliding window attention patterns and some of the AB interleaving we saw in Zamba 2 is interesting. But really the aim here is memory efficient inference. And it is kind of nuts that in this day and age, it's common to see sub 10 billion parameter models with a context window this large at 128,000 tokens. So their use cases are pretty clear at this point, and I think it's cool that they've already mentioned the idea of using these for agentic workflows, but let's see what they actually suggest here. So they say our most innovative customers and partners have increasingly been asking for local privacy-first inference for critical applications such as on-device translation, internet-less smart assistance, so basically you just don't have cell service for an API, local analytics, and autonomous robotics. I, I would say autonomous robotics being the most interesting of all of these. Le Ministro were built to provide compute efficient low latency solutions for these scenarios. And with high efficiency comes low latency. That's a really important sort of side effect you get from these models when they're tuned this way. And they claim to still be supporting kind of the local AI side because they say from independent hobbyists, to global manufacturing team teams, these models are meant to deliver value for a wide variety of use cases. And the coolest part of this entire announcement, in my opinion, is this little snippet right here. So they say, used in conjunction with larger language models such as Mistral Large, Le Ministro are also efficient intermediaries for function calling in multi-step agentic workflows. They can be tuned to handle input parsing, task routing, calling APIs based on user intent across multiple contexts, and are extremely low latency and low cost. So what's interesting is they're basically saying, uh, stepping away from a conventional mixture of experts, architecture, and moving into kind of a large model actually orchestrating a number of smaller models. The idea being that you can fit more of these on a single GPU. So basically you run one inference pass with a large model, and then that results in kind of a set of instructions or a task list for a bunch of smaller models that you can fit on the same GPU and run in parallel, as opposed to just doing one kind of smarter or deeper thinking inference run with a model like Mistral Large. The benchmarks are quite interesting. Mistral is clearly winning out here, and 
And I will say there are clearer wins for Ministral 3B more so than there are for Ministral 8B. And that starts to get into sort of the bad news portion of the good and bad news when it comes to talking about these models. So clearly Ministral 3B is handily outperforming Llama 3.2 3B and Gemma 2 2B. When it comes to competing with Mistral 7B and looking at what Ministral 8B is able to do, the difference in knowledge and common sense isn't quite there in my opinion. But there are significant gains in multilingual interaction, which I think is kind of interesting. And I will say what Ministral 8B is able to do in the space of Ministral 7B is impressive because you can likely run more instances of Ministral 8B on less memory than you ever could Ministral 7B regardless of what you did. And there are some other reasons for why that's possible. So the benchmarks aren't necessarily stunning. Uh, multilingual MMLU is clearly a strong suit of these models. And I think it's pretty cool to see. But you can still see there are plenty of areas where in dark blue and light blue, where Llama 318B is still quite performant. And it's interesting to see how Llama 318B is still a very impressive model, uh, even compared to some of these other models. And what I think is most interesting is looking at how close the performance is between Ministral 3B and Ministral 8B, which is significantly closer than the pretty significant performance gap we see in most of these benchmarks between Llama 3.1 8B and Llama 3.2 3B. We're also getting instruct models right out of the box, which I think is really cool. This model is also already available on MLX. And what I think is interesting here is this is where you basically can gauge roughly how good this model is at coding. So when we look at Chat Arena, using GPT-4 Omni as the judge, code, math, and function calling. Ministral 3B is pulling ahead in some pretty big ways. And the picture is a little bit blurrier when we look at Ministral 8B. So the benchmarks are pretty impressive. I would expect this to become one of the better local coding models. I've been using Cursor a ton, and as much as I like Cloud Sonnet 3.5, it would be really cool if eventually I could have a model close to that locally, but I wouldn't say this model is necessarily close to that at all. So instruct models, I think, are always a little bit more interesting because they're just more tuned to what people are actually using these models right now. And benchmarks that focus on these, I think, give greater insight. This is really where the bad news starts to come in. So the weights for these models are not released yet, and there is no local inference code currently. So right now, you have to use these with uh, Mistral's APIs, but they are really, really cheap. And given the context size of input they can use, it's still pretty impressive. They say for self-deployed use, they need to reach out from, for commercial licenses. And that comes to the next bit of bad news, where these models are no longer using Apache 2.0, which is one of the more permissive open source licenses. They're using what's called the Mistral Commercial License or the Mistral Research License. And this is fine. It might seem like something that's kind of innocuous, but it does mark kind of a sea change with how Mistral has approached these models. And more importantly, just letting people who are hobbyists or local AI enthusiasts use these models. And obviously we will eventually see them. There's some people on Twitter who are talking about this being the end of Mistral AI, which I don't think is the case because why would you create really small models you can only run as an API? And for them wanting models to be as tuned as possible before they're released as raw weights, I kind of understand where they're coming from. So they do mention here that there is more to come. They still want to keep pushing the state of the art ever farther forward. And I think they will continue to do so and continue to, to support the kind of hobbyist side of things as well. Building on the backs of things like Mistral 7B, which might seem dated at this point, but we have to remember how big, uh, just how big a step forward Mistral 7B was just one year ago. So I'm probably going to do a stream tonight where I'm going to try to use these models using an API. I might plug some of them into Cursor to see how that goes. But I'm curious, are you guys excited to use these models? Do you think Ministral will really start to push forward this new trend of really small, capable models meant for agentic task workers or agentic tasks in general? Are you using any of these models for agentic tasks right now? I'm really curious because you know I have the things that I do, but you guys always seem to suggest much more interesting things you're doing with your models and your workflows. So let me know in the comments below. Um, as always, I hope you learned something from this video. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.